the enjoyment. Also in Gita, Krishna said, Pushyanta, <coughs> do this meat. This is the main thing, and this will save us, and this is the best yoga. To sit together and listen Harikata. This is the best yoga, it's supreme yoga. Sitting here, doing nothing, completely just almost inert, going with full speed, go back to Goloka. The devotees who sit here is the best way. This is the highest yoga. Krishna is very happy with this. So this I learned, that we can learn also from Sri Narayamaraj, how much he emphasized this Harikata. No? He gave this to the West. Before, they know, okay, Hare Krishna chant do Kirtan, but Harikata was not so much appreciated. But he gave this. Himself, of course, he was an excellent speaker. And uh, not only speaker, he gave this all bhavas. So he emphasized this and he gave this to us. This is a really important part of bhakti. This will nourish, this will give some inspiration. And we hope also that the power of Ram of this Harikata is that Krishna comes to the heart. Through the ear, he enters into the heart. And he will throw out all the dirty things, whatever. This is very important. And today also, not only Ram Chandra's appearance, they also, Sri Bhakti Vartita Goswami Maharaj. I'm very happy you put this picture here. And also Gurudev's picture, this is very touching, I would say. That is sweet. Both saved my life, I can say. I have very, very nice experience, of course, Gurudev. But before I met Gurudev, I met Shri Bhakti Vartita Goswami Maharaj, and he was an extraordinary Vaishnava. Whoever met him, he realized that he was such an energy, he cannot speak that, no? Until old age, when he was already old, could not more speak, but his energy, just his appearance was, when he was calm, it was like sunrise. It was incredible. <laughs> and he was very nice at speaking, very clear teachings he gave, and his kirtan was completely not from this world. No? When I listened to his kirtan first time in his life, I finished it. I had no more taste for this material enjoyment. Finished. I had no desire to give it up. I came to the temple. I was maybe five, six times in the temple. The Sunday gift fest, Sunday feast guest. Then Bhakti Vartita Goswami Maharaj came with Ananta Ram and the Sri Kanta Prabhu and now it's Vishnu Maharaj and some devotees and they did Kirtan. It was a small place like this, not much bigger than this. <coughs> Similar like a storefront in Vienna. And then they asked, he gave some kata, Maharaj. I came there, I remember there was, the Kirtan group was there, they are really excellent Kirtan, yes, they did. And I sat there, I have no idea, I was thinking, who of them is Bhakti or Kirtan I said, no, <laughs> <laughs> it was, so I was completely new, I had no idea, so. None of them was it. Then Kirtan, when he entered the room, then I understood who is Bhakti or It was like, such energy he came. And then he sit down on the Brasa Sun. When he's sitting on the Brasa Sun, he became a lion. He was shouting with full voice. No? I could not understand a single word. There's the Assami pronunciation. I was new to that. I could not understand what he spoke. But how he spoke, it just come out from him like a volcano. It was like that nature. He spoke sometimes silent, sometimes so that they come out like this. So could not understand what he spoke. Then after class, they asked Maharaj, you want to lead the Kirtan, please? Because the devotees there knew him. Yeah. Then Maharaj agreed. So they did the Gora Arati, Sandhya Arati. But he started, Ito Nishingo, Varto Nishingo. He liked that Nishingo Kirtan. So he sang that Kirtan. With one hand, he took the Danda. He was holding, the other hand, he raised in the air and he was shouting this, like, with Face became red. I mean, who has seen him? He can, they can, his face became red. The veins came out. He was with full energy. He was shouting, and the brahmacharis became mad. You know, they had two, three mridangas, these big cartels, and the ganta in that small room. And, and he was, he was really calling. And his kirtan was really like that. And he was calling the Lord. And you could really feel he has full connection. One time. Bhakti King Kadamadamaraj told me he was living in Kirtan, he went in Kolkata or somewhere doing Kirtan. 
and Bhakti Rasa Tirtha was so much, was leading the Kirtan outside on the street. And uh, the sound system, you know, Indian sound system, some, some rickshaw with 100,000 things and it's never working properly. And they had some problems, of course, we like this, always feedback. So this sound system had to stop. But Bhakti Ratita Maharaj, he was just singing, chanting, he didn't realize that he stopped. So he went on, he had the ganta and he went. Mm. And the Mirdanga player went with him, because he was thinking, where to go? Gurudev is going, so I better go with him. But the others were waiting, and he was going already some 50, 100 meters. He did not realize they did not follow. Then they, they are not here. He was fully chanting, really full. He was not caring what is going on outside. And he took all with him. That was so beautiful. So that took place in such a small room. You can imagine how it was like pulsating the whole thing. And I was really, I never saw that in my life. So the temple was at that time said, come. They were starting dancing, you know, and like in circles. And he said, come also. I was hiding behind one pillar. I was really afraid of that. <laughs> <laughs> Such an energy came from there, you know. <laughs> so uh, that was really too much. Then... After the kitten, this kitten is actually recorded also. So when I have traveled in all over the world, I listen to some people this have in the car and I always remember that was the first time I met <laughs> Srila Maharaj. Mm. It gives me such a good remembrance. Then after the kitten, we all sit down and do prasadam. And I still remember the prasad. That was so wonderful. And then our Munimas, Temple President, he gave me the garland of Puja Bhatt. The Maharaj, and when he put that garland around my neck, I felt like, what is that? <laughs> there was so much happiness coming from that. And I thought to him in my mind, actually, I'm that time I was 26, I'm running around like a madman to find happiness. We're going to some clubs and do this, you do pubs and take drugs and do parties and all these things. I never get happiness like this. So I said, why to go anywhere else anymore? I will never go. So I've, that was not my desire to give that up even, but I thought, okay, it's useless, useless. So uh, that was his mercy, just seeing him one afternoon. Such an influence came from Maharaj. Then shortly <clears throat> after, my Gurudev came to Vienna. And then, he, but without the preparation of Srila Bhakti Tita Goswami Maharaj, I could not have understood who is Gurudev. So. Mm -hmm. But when I first time saw the picture of Srila Bhakti Tita Maharaj, this old man. Temple person showed me, you see who is coming, and I saw the, I saw the picture. It was an old man. <laughs> no feeling coming, no time. But when I attained his kirtan and I got his garland and everything, when Guru Maharaj came, I invited all my friends. I showed them, you see who is coming, who is coming. I understood <laughs> what is the sadhu, yeah. what the sadhus can do. That is completely different. I never had experienced that. What is the power of sadhu? It's completely electric, you know, you touch, you feel that. It's... So therefore, I'm really too much indebted to Shri Bhakti Atita Maharaj. And I met him a few times after also. And every time, he's like, he's giving full energy. And there's nothing, in... I never saw him that he's little or something. It's always like a flood, like a tsunami. When he... I remember also uh, the last darshan I had when he was speaking still, after I saw him, but he was no more speaking. That was maybe 2010 or 13, something like that. We went in his room in Mayapur. It was festival time. And uh, then one Russian devotee asked, it was a small, it was like not even half of his room, so we squished all inside that. And one Russian devotee asked, Maharaj, how to control the mind? I guess it's a question that is relevant for all. <laughs> then Maharaj was a little laughing. Is he all asking this? <laughs> he said, this is a common question and this we have to ask also. And we should solve it also. No? So he, he said, but his answer was really wonderful. How to control the mind? He said, if you want the bhakti from the core of your heart, same moment you can the same moment he said, like the walls were vibrating. The same moment you will have it. If you want it from the core of your heart, because without bhakti there is no mind control. Hmm. Bhakti means to Krishna, to serve Krishna. We cannot control our mind without service to Krishna. Mukunda seva yayadvat yata atma adhanasham yati. He said in Bhagavatam, Yamadiva yoga patai 
You can control your mind by yoga, by yama, niyama, by rules, regulations. You can control your karma, your lobha, the greed and lust, but for some time only. Kama, lobha, hatta, muhu. Okay, sometimes you can do, if you practice, you can control, but you stop practice, same crazy mind is like before. He's not changing. But Mukunda Sevaya Yadvat Yatta Atma Adhana Shamyati. That service to Krishna directly touches the soul. That changes completely. And if you stop practicing, still mind is happy. That is the difference. So without bhakti, we cannot control our mind. So Srila Bhakti said, he did not go to any psychological things, how to control the mind or any techniques. And if you want bhakti from the core of your heart, same moment you can. Same moment you will have it. I put it in my diary. I wrote down this. It was such a revelation. But then he said, go to your heart and see what is there. We don't want it from the core of our heart. Who wants selfless service? Day and night. Who wants that? <laughs> we, we, can, we can all repeat. We can all repeat and we can explain an unbroken stream of honey. But who wants service day and night? And we can explain in night lectures, but who wants that? Who is ready for that sacrifice? No? When Srila Bhakti Siddhanta left his world, he told his disciples, don't be disappointed when you find out nobody's interested. <laughs> Selfless service to Hari, just go on. And it's very difficult to want that. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta he said, see, go into your heart and look what is there. Bhakti is also there. <laughs> One place, 99 or somewhere, but we have 10,000 things before. It's not number one to serve Krishna. So therefore mind is also not controlled. So that is very difficult. For this we need blessings of the bhaktas. Bhaktiya, Sanjataya, Bhaktiya. Bhakti comes from Bhakti. There's nothing else which can give you Bhakti. And Bhakti is in the heart of the bhaktas. So we need to, it's 100% necessary to meet such great Vaishnavas. Actually, Bhakti Vrtita Goswami Maharaj said, our Guru Vargas, we have to meet them and somehow get this. It's not given by language, but it's given from heart to heart. This is necessary. And this is the beautiful Sadhu Sangha. This is the, the very valuable effect of this Sadhu Sangha. And to listen to this Harikata. <coughs> this, this will give everything you become happy you get friendship you control your mind everything finally krishna doesn't know what to do he will give himself for this also he will clean the heart but when the heart is clean then what to do anymore you have nothing. <laughs> if we have sins and we do sadhu sangha krishna will come and clean the heart but if those who have no sins if they have pure heart they do sadhu sangha then krishna thinks what to do how to compensate so he's giving himself for those who do the sadhu sangha therefore this is the best what we can do, and this especially, our Guru Mahal said, we say we do Sadhu Sangha, but who is a real Sat? Sat Sangha, we do Sat Sangha, but who is Sat? Mm -hmm. All are Sat, we are all in this world. But we say Sat Sangha, yes, we need Sat Sangha. <laughs> if more, that means Sat Sangha. But mm -hmm. actually we have to, at least one should be a Sat, should be connected. So if you meet these great Vaishnavas, and also to the Qatar today, we are, if we can think of them, can remember them, it's a great blessing. So Bhakti Atyata Maharaj really is exemplary Vaishnava. He appeared today on Ramchandra's Mariana Purushottam's appearance day. So himself also he was like that. Yeah. He kept all Mariana perfectly. And he expected this also from his disciples. So when you will meet one disciple of Bhakti Atyata Maharaj, you will see how he will treat you. Mm. It's like, like mother. If you come to their temple, Bhakti Uttita Maharaj said, who comes to my temple here shall feel at home. Everybody who comes, and if you go to Chaitanya Gaudiya you will feel that. They will give you prasad, they will do, they will do everything. They are very kind. They got this from Shri Bhakti Uttita Maharaj. He really trained them very nicely. And himself also, he gave a good example that Shri Bhakti Bicha Vishnu Maharaj, who is now Chari, he told me that. He said, my Gurudev never spoke this to me, but I observed in his behavior how to deal with the Vaishnava Sanghas. This is, I think, a good topic because we have so many problems in Kali Yuga, how to deal with each other. And he said, my Gurudev, 
Srila Bhakti Vrti Prabhu Swami Maharaj. He was, he was no, he was the embodiment of Guru Nishtha. Like he surrendered to his Guru Dev, Srila Bhakti Dhaka Mahara Guru Swami Maharaj. This you cannot find. Only Siddhas can surrender like that. Actually. You cannot find that conditioned soul surrender so much. So after Srila Mahara Guru Swami Maharaj left, Srila Tirta Maharaj, he still used to go to the same doctor like his Guru Dev. He said, he's not the best doctor, <laughs> my Guru Dev went to this doctor, so I don't want to go anywhere else. And he, fo- he kept the same panjika, the same calendar, and he followed even these details, everything he followed. He st- he, because he said, I remember my Guru Dev. He did not want to do anything else. What is not his, connected with his Guru Dev, he did not want that. But after his Guru Dev left, so he took Shiksha from Srila Bhakti Pramod Santa Goswami Maharaj and Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj. Uttama, high class Vaishnavas. But still, that Vishnu Maharaj said to me, I saw in my Gurudev, if somebody of these high class Shiksha Gurus said something which his Gurudev was not saying, he did not follow that. But he never said anything. So if some Vaishnavas are coming, if we go to some other temples and we listen to some Kata, which my Gurudev never said. No need to say, hey, my Gurudev never said this. <laughs> it's not necessary. I don't have to follow that. Mm-hmm. I just listen and respect. There are so many varieties. So if somebody comes, no, some Vaishnava is coming and it's okay, we don't have to follow that. But... So he said that he learned this from his Gurudev. Never say anything. He served everyone. He respected everyone. Keep friendship with everyone, but he followed only to his Gurudev. So that is very, I think, a very good instruction how to live together because we have variety so much variety we have and we have to live together so but my Gurudev gave some every you can see every Gurudev every Acharya gives something special in his devotees and you can almost recognize who is whose Guru <laughs> you can see that must be Bhakti Vatiyata Maharaj's disciple that must be Narayan Shal Narayan Maharaj's disciple you you feel that somehow no? so that is also okay our gurus, they gave us something special and that is okay, so we can respect that and each other also don't have to make all same. Mm. And then you see, we make festivals together, take Pashan together, do Kirtan together, and then we go home and do our own sadhana. <laughs> where is the problem? <laughs> that is, not, everybody has to follow what I am doing, you know. That, is, I, that was a very helpful instruction mm. in Shabhakti Vichavishnu Maharaj when I met him. I found that very practical. And if you go do like this, everybody who come, we serve and give respect. And we follow our Guru Dev and then all are happy like that. So that is, we have to learn from our Acharyas how they do. That they never do a parade, never do one offense, never do any sins. His whole life, no sin, no offense. Whole, from childhood, never do any sin. Such a character he had. So, and always he was speaking everything for his Gurudev, preaching for his Gurudev, preaching for Krishna, he did not care. Many people come or nobody comes. Once they had a program in India, in one place, I don't know where. The devotees arranged a big bundle, because in India you go, mm-hmm. there are big people, so there are many seats inside, nice bundle, nice sound system, nice. One person showed up, <laughs> one old man showed up, really good. <laughs> It was maybe South India somewhere. Mm. They're not so much attracted to the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. But only one person, it was placed maybe for 200 or something. One person showed up. So the brahmacharis who organized that, they felt very, oh my God, what to do? So they went and they did Kirtan. Then Shri Bhakti Vatita Maharaj came out. He not looking. He sat down, speak Harikata for one and a half hours. <laughs> the person was also sleeping after that. <laughs> <laughs> then he asked the Brahmacharya now to keep them and finish. And but... <laughs> not care what is the result or what he did. He did it for his good. He was such a kind of devotee. Not thinking, I heard the Sam Sanyasi, he came once to a program. No people is there, he refused to speak. Mm-hmm. Says, Don't speak if nobody is here. What is that? Do not speak for public or to become popular or something. We speak for our Gurudev, to remember our Gurudev, to connect. And then Bhakti Yotirtamash, before he gave Kata, always he said, I am to purify my own self. I am giving this Kata. Always he said like that. And he, he meant it like that. And sometimes also he, 
Because public program, if you go some public, you cannot speak Harikata. You just speak some knowledge, something about Harikata, Lilakata is something else. But himself, of course, the devotee is like Lilakata. This is the king of Harikata. So, but when he had public programs, sometimes he was giving class in, in the room before, for his Guru Dev alone. He was giving full mm. class. Then he went out and spoke the knowledge. <laughs> but he had so much taste for this Kata. What he listened from his Guru Dev. He had so much taste for that to repeat that. He did not care for outside what is going on. So it is very nice to see such that devotees, to meet such devotees, to hopefully we can we can do some service to them, listen from them, serve them. And they're very simple also. When he left he under Rasasan he was like shouting and he was very serious. When he went down, he was like a small boy. <laughs> it was amazing transformation. He was joking, he was like this. But when he sat on the Vyasa Sangha, he was very serious, very serious. But this, our Guru Maharaj also said, if you not see this bhava, if you not see these devotees who carry this bhava, it's difficult to understand it. You have to see, Guru Maharaj, he met once, Srila Bhamshi Das Babaji Maharaj, our Guru Dev. So he said, if you don't see such persons, you cannot, you cannot understand what is spontaneous devotion. Mm -hmm. That is not a cheap thing, you know. Prabhupada said, Pujara Ragava Pata Gaurava Bambi. Keep this Raga part, keep it on your head, keep it above you. Don't drag it down. You think we have Raga for this world, this is the same like the gopis have Raga for Krishna. You should not think this is something similar. Oh, I understood <laughs> that we should not take it down. Keep it, keep it on your head. This is something very high. But we have to see the devotees who have that. We are fortunate enough to pray for this, no? to get. This sadhu Sangha is not a sadhu Sangha is not a right. Sadhu Sangha is a blessing. This is a mercy, so we should pray for this mercy to have this sadhu Sangha until last breath. This is the best. So I'm praying to the lotus feet of Shabbat Tirti Padu Sangha. He bless us all with his full dedication. <laughs> Today on this Ram Navami day. Very happy to be together. Unlimited things to say more. <laughs> both for Ramchandra's kata and the Bhakti of Kirtan Murata's kata, both are very tasty. But I think we not make it too long. Some drama will also come. And thank you so much for giving some opportunity to speak. <laughs>